I've always wanted to participate in what was happening in my community and contribute something to it, even if it's a small amount of activity. Because I'm a part of a community, I'm a part of the society, I'm a part of the world, and you cannot divorce yourself from that. I supported Chicago Foundation for Women from the very beginning. We supported the ACLU, we supported uh, we lobbied against the war in Vietnam, we lobbied against the war in Iraq, we marched in civil rights marches, we did all of the kinds of liberal things that were occurring through our lifetime and continue to do that. Women Employed is a 44-year-old advocacy organization whose mission is to improve women's economic status. Today we're working on the issues that uh, especially affect low-paid working women, uh, working to expand their rights on the job like the right to paid sick time or paid family leave, uh, equal pay, and we're also working to ensure that more women can enter and succeed in higher education uh, because that's always been a good income strategy for women. He basically said my firm, you know, the older partners at my firm don't want to hire women. I thought, now how can you say this in an interview? And uh, it started to dawn on me in law school that it really was tougher for women. So Arab American Family Services was established in 2001 uh, by myself and my business partner, Nairman Taha. We saw a huge need to meet the needs of the Arab American community uh, due to the language. So and language was the biggest obstacle for our community members to access help. It was after Philando Castile and Alton Sterling, after they got murdered by policemen. You know, there were many protests going on that week, and I felt, you know, as much as those protests were going on, I felt like there wasn't anything targeted towards the youth, or I didn't feel very connected towards it. First thought it was gonna be maybe 50 people, like, sitting in Millennium Park, like, silent. It was gonna be, like, a small, but, like, powerful group. We had 2,000 people show up. And we organized it in three days. And it's important to like claim that space and to be like, listen, like I'm not about to let you erase me or invalidate me. Like I'm standing my ground because I know that like no one could have done this. Like I did this. We've always seen the economic issues as at the heart. So that if a woman is able to uh, earn a decent living, put food on the table, take care of herself and her family, uh, she has all kinds of options that she doesn't have if she's economically insecure. Uh, there are so many jobs that were closed to women in the 60s and 70s that uh, we were able to open because women had the talents and the abilities to succeed in those jobs, but they just didn't have the opportunity. So when organizations like Women Employed and others across the country got the federal government to enforce equal opportunity laws and require real affirmative action, that started to break down the barriers and women have been crossing them ever since. Nerman and I looked at the needs of the community. Nerman and I looked at as ourselves being immigrants coming here at the age of nine, not speaking a word of English. I mean, that's huge. And having to step outside of our realm and help our parents navigate the system, we wanted to ensure that future generations don't do that. We wanted to make sure that other children don't have to be called in uh, from school, kept home from school so they can go with mom to the Department of Human Services so that they can talk to the police officer. So we are about education, we are about um, empowerment, and we are, we are about opening and uh, programs and services that will help them to access them. The work that I do with nonprofits is primarily tax related and governance um, related and kind of general corporate. Um, in many ways, running a nonprofit is just like running a business. I'm a huge believer in advocacy by nonprofits, and I credit CFW with my education in that area. Uh, when I was on the board in the early days, there was a lot of discussion and most of the organizations were doing direct service and it was CFW that was saying, but even if you're a direct service organization, we want you to be doing advocacy because that's the only way you're going to reach even more people and make more of an impact through your work. And I strongly believe that. So I'm glad to be able in my practice to encourage people to be involved in advocacy. 
I think I really consider myself an activist because after that first sitting, because I was able to take this interest that I'd always had and always loved and be able to act on it and make a difference in our city. And I think that's really when the like it clicked for me. It was nobody else but young black girls. And the fact that we're still leading it on is very important because I think it's important for young girls to know that we do have the power and we're usually the ones who take the initiative to make use our power for something good. No one ever goes past the Chicago River, like ever. No one ever like crosses there or anything. We want to make history. We want to go past this bridge. We deserve to go past this bridge. It was important for us to pass that because yeah. four young black girls planned this protest and were able to pass where protesters have never been a, a protest that large, like 2,000 people are never able to go. We did it again. And we did it again a month later. You know, you don't have to create a protest like us to be considered an activist. Like, it's as simple as, you know, joining a club or even starting a club in your school to really get people more involved and make people more aware. Because that's the route to, you know, creating a solution to the problem is having people more aware of what the problem is. And so I think education is the simplest step to, you know, being involved. Education and public education is the bedrock of a democracy. And women are not a, not a, a creative observation or 50% of our population. And for democracy to flourish, they need educated population and citizens who are, can be activists in an intelligent and informed way. I've been on the, a founding member and still on the board of the Young Women's Leadership Charter School. This is our 17th year, and it serves inner city women in a, a college prep education, focusing on math, science, and technology. The biggest um, challenge in the early days was uh, to convince people that they needed to fund specifically programs for women and girls. Um, often the response was, well, we fund this organization and it serves everybody. Why isn't that sufficient? But women and girls have different issues um, that they face. There's been discrimination throughout history, um, the extent of violence against women. All of these were issues are and continue to be issues that affect women and girls differently. I just wanted my boys, no matter where they're at or where they are, to be proud of who they are and to be know that they're American, of Arab descent, and to be able to practice their Islamic faith to the best of their ability in a, in a, in a land that's operating on freedom of religion. To be able to say, this is my country, but I'm also Muslim, and I want to practice my faith, and I'm also Palestinian, and I want to be able to you know, voice my opinion on these issues. We're especially proud right now of the victories we had in the past year on paid sick time. So with uh, new ordinances that have been passed now in the city of Chicago and Cook County, a million working people who didn't have access to paid sick time now have it. I just think it's important to know that there need to be more black women on the forefront. It's, and they've always been there. Just they, There needs to be visibility. It's always about visibility. It's always about knowing that you can see a black woman or a woman of color or someone who looks like you or is just like you that is doing things that you want to do. And I think that's why we wanted to make it so clear that four, or four black girls did this and are going to keep doing this in the future. For us, we wanted to bridge and we wanted to connect and we wanted to say that we're here to build bridges between both cultures. And that's what America's about. That's what America's about, is connecting and building connections, maintaining your identity while also being proud of who you are as an American as well. And then seeing AFS going from two staff to 24, from one department to over nine, um, from two clients to over 8,000 families, that's huge. It's, it's an institution. So we're really cementing um, a, future, a, a future for many, many generations to come. Keep pushing. <laughs> I mean, that's what my advice is. Keep pushing and do what you think you're comfortable doing or effective doing. I mean, you just, or stay alert, be informed. You, you know, you have to be an informed citizenry to affect change. And that's what I would certainly push women to do.
It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Ashe. 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 Ashe.